bursts of joy. People grateful to be alive. A few hours earlier, in the central Mediterranean Sea, which language do you speak? English? Their boat was about to sink. In spite of the very bad weather, their small rubber boat took to sea at around midnight, not far from Tripoli. The teams on board the Bourbon Argos came to the refugees' rescue, 121 people in all, including 28 women and six children. They're wet from the rain and, uh, and they're in a very distressed situation, uh, a lot of scared people. But uh, now it's good to have them on, uh, on deck, uh, they're all safe. Uh, we're trying to give them a, a dignified uh, reception here. After Dignity One was deployed off the Libyan coast a month ago, the Bourbon Argos too resumed its search and rescue operations with a team of doctors, nurses and logistics experts on board. Later that evening, the refugees landed on the Italian coast. A third MSF team is on the Aquarius, again ready to provide assistance off the northern coast of Libya. Many people die at sea and uh, this is uh, the responsibility of the, of the European community to uh, offer them a safe and legal passage uh, instead of this uh, dangerous and useless journey. Since the 20th of March, migrants arriving clandestinely on the Greek islands are automatically sent back to Turkey. This is an unacceptable policy and an attack on the values of the European Union. We need a fast-track system, probably with humanitarian visas, to let the refugees in. They must be allowed to choose their final destination. It's not by preventing them or closing a border that they're going to stop people coming to Europe. Two months after the signing of the deal by Brussels and Ankara, the chaos continues in Greece. 12,000 migrants and refugees have been living, or rather surviving, in this camp in Idomini since Macedonia closed its borders. Conditions in the camp are really bad, as you can see. There are germs everywhere because there aren't enough toilets available, so children just get up and go to the toilet outside. And there are a lot of insects too. They bite the kids and it increases the risk of them getting sick. The situation is really bad. Given the scale of the health emergency, MSF has this month launched a vaccination campaign. Bravo. In three days, over 3,000 children were vaccinated against 10 diseases such as diphtheria, hepatitis B, polio and pneumonia. They've been put in this very vulnerable position. Um, we are, they are now exp exposed to quite a number of um, disease and illness um, and entirely unnecessary. And um, this really needs to change. 50,000 migrants and refugees are still stranded in Greece. Some are in transit camps. Others are locked up in hotspots far beyond the maximum limit established for administrative detention. Where is the human rights? This is not camp, this is prison. MSF has appealed to the Greek authorities and European Union to open immediately the gates at these hotspots. Ruins. This is all that's left after the airstrike. 55 people, six of them health workers, were killed by bombs dropped by the Syrian Air Force. Al Quds Hospital had 34 beds and several departments, including an emergency room, an outpatient unit, and an operating theater. It was the region's main referral center for pediatric care. In her speech to the UN Security Council, MSF's president called for a refusal to accept the unacceptable. We will relentlessly denounce attack on healthcare. We will, sp we will speak out loudly and with force about what we witness in the field. Medicine must not be a deadly occupation. Patients must not be attacked or slaughtered in their beds for their sake. Translate this resolution into action. Adopted unanimously by the UN, the resolution demands protection for hospitals and doctors in conflict situations. Last year, there were 94 attacks on hospitals and clinics supported by MSF in Syria. There have been seven since the beginning of this year.
In front of Pfizer in New York, an empty crib and flowers, 2,500 in all. One for every child lost to pneumonia every day. There is a vaccine, but only one third of the world's children can be immunized because of its prohibitive price. MSF is calling for the price to be reduced to $5 for developing countries and aid organizations. The refusal of Pfizer to price its pneumonia vaccine at a reasonable level for the developing world effectively puts life-saving prevention out of the reach of millions of children. It's time for Pfizer to do their part, to be a good global citizen, to provide vaccines at an affordable price for the global poor. On the crib are the names of those who signed the Affair Shot petition. 415,000 people from 170 countries, like these campaigners in London, where the head office of the other manufacturer of the vaccine is located. In recent years, MSF has vaccinated hundreds of thousands of child refugees against pneumonia in Central African Republic, South Sudan, Ethiopia and Uganda. Whether responding to an emergency caused by natural disaster, treating war casualties, vaccinating hundreds of thousands of people in just a few weeks, or setting up a refugee camp in the middle of nowhere, logistics and supply are essential to MSF's operations. Every year, MSF supply centers deliver an average of 12,000 tons of medical and non-medical supplies and equipment. The supply centers purchase, warehouse and transport large quantities of medical and non-medical supplies to the countries where MSF has operations. In 2015, 5 million syringes, 44,000 fleece blankets and 1,500,000 malaria tests were dispatched from the Bordeaux supply center to field projects run by the French operations center. Quality control and approval of medical items, procurement, supply, warehousing, order preparation, transport, between 1,500 and 2,000 people are involved in some way in the supply chain, in the field, at head office, or at supply centers. Teams assess needs according to the situation in the field. For example, health workers at Ebola treatment centers require protective clothing, goggles, rubber boots, suits, and gloves to avoid contact with bodily fluids. When stocks need replenishing and the items cannot be purchased locally, an order is sent to the supply centre. It often takes several weeks for orders to be delivered from supply centres. For locally purchased orders, it takes anything between a few hours and a month. In the field, one of the main tasks of the person in charge of supply is to implement quality control and ensure stocks are in sufficient quantity. When MSF responds to an emergency, it's usually the supply centres that dispatch supplies and equipment. Usually sent by air, they can be delivered to the field within 48 hours. Ready-to-use kits are pre-prepared. They contain everything needed to respond to an emergency situation. Nutrition kits to treat patients suffering from malnutrition. Rapid intervention surgical kits to enable the teams to start delivering medical aid as soon as they get to the field. And field hospital kits that can be sent to a conflict zone or the scene of a natural disaster. The cholera kit, designed to provide treatment to 625 patients, for example, contains 4,000 litres of infusion fluid, 1,300 catheters, 1,000 pairs of medical examination gloves, 20 pairs of boots, and 500 patient follow-up cards. Two-thirds of medical supplies are purchased on the international market by the supply centres. Oral medications and vaccines are purchased in India. Injectable drugs, such as anaesthetics and antibacterials, are sourced from European manufacturers. Most non-medical items are purchased locally. Close to 50,000 items are now listed in the MSF catalogue, 
In 2015, MSF's purchasing budget totaled 270 million euros. Actually, 80% of the hospitals in whole Libya reduced the activities just for the ER and try just to do the very urgent activities, like only maternity, only ER are functioning, but also they are suffering because there's no uh, medical personnel to cover the uh, shifts and also most of the time they ask the patient to bring all the equipments with them. So if I have my wife, she's going to deliver, I go to the hospital, I need to stop by a private pharmacy and buy all the equipments and come to the hospital with all the equipments where the health care is supposed to be free uh, in that uh, place. So those are really created a huge problem for the population who's seeking a health care in, in, in whole Libya, not in particular city or the other. I have seen a man uh, in, in the pediatric hospital, he's a pediatrician. He was really crying because he couldn't save his patient because lack of uh, medications. And the child just dead because they have no medication. Just to being a doctor is not enough to save people's lives. 